It's the 1st of July and I'm on an organic farm here based near Shrewsbury in Shropshire. And I'm having a look at this organic quinoa crop, which has really had a lot thrown at it over the past few weeks. It's had absolutely bucket loads of rain land on it over the past couple of days. The weather conditions here have been really hot. So it's interesting just to come out to the field and see how this specific crop has responded to those different weather conditions. The crop at the moment is at the stage where it's just about to start flowering. And really for this time of year, we'd like it to be a little bit further ahead than that. And the reason why it's slightly behind is that due to the cool conditions at planting in April, we really weren't able to get this crop in quite as early as we wanted in the season. The result of that is essentially gonna be maybe a slightly lower yield, but it's gonna also mean a later harvest. And a later harvest is always just harder work for everybody to have to cope with. If we take a little look at the canopy of this quinoa crop, we can start to notice a couple of interesting things. The main one for me is that some of these leaves in the middle are starting to turn a little bit more yellowy sooner than what we'd expect for the season. And I think the reason for that is that we've had so much rain over the past few weeks, a lot of the nitrogen that's in the soil has been washed away. And nitrogen is really important for us because that allows us to have a nice green lush canopy that's able to capture all the sunlight that's landing upon it. And it's not a big problem, this crop will still be fine, but I think it's just a function of the type of year we've had so far in the weather that this crop has been exposed to. One of the things that we of course have to compete with every single year is the weeds and this specific weed here is called fathead and I have actually spoken about it before in previous videos because it's quite closely related to quinoa. Fathead is really good at competing for things like water, for light, for nutrients and it takes that away from the quinoa crop to reduce its yield. Also, the fathead produces a really tiny black seed, which when you come to combine the field, it will get mixed in with the rest of the quinoa crop. And that's not a huge issue to us. We can actually clean those seeds out quite easily. It's just another thing that we have to contend with every single year. Another weed that we have issues with every single year is this weed here. This is called bindweed. And it's actually pretty good at competing for yield. However, the bigger issue that we have with it is it produces a small, black weed seed that's a very similar size and shape to the quinoa grain so they're very difficult to separate out. The only way we can do it at the moment is on an optical sorter where we're sorting the crop based upon colour and those darker weed seeds are actually physically ejected from the sample. So that's where this crop of quinoa is for this time of year. And although we focus a little bit more upon the weeds within this specific video, the level of weeds that we're actually seeing within this field are perfectly tolerable and well within what we'd call an acceptable level. So what this crop really needs now is a whole lot of heat and a whole lot of sunshine to start to drive it forwards towards harvest. Mm -hmm. 